Hey guys, Garbulch here. It's been about a year now, I guess, since my last vehicle update. This is my 2013 Jeep Wrangler that I showed you guys up on Imogene Pass last year. And as you can see, she looks a little different now. Done some modifications, obviously. So I'll go through some of the stuff I've done to the outside and then we'll take a look at my everyday carry system on the inside because it's uh, evolved quite a bit since last year. So starting with the obvious, uh, we have a lift and 35 inch tires. That's a Terraflex two and a half inch lift. Uh, these are Nitto <clears throat> Trail Grappler MTs and 35, 12 and a half. These are Terraflex Nomad wheels. And then we've replaced uh, the bumper, added a winch. Uh, this is a fairly generic bumper, but it's nice and heavy duty. Uh, bench is holding up pretty good. And there's a Apex Badlands winch, which some people aren't super huge fan of, but it's done pretty good for me. I've already pulled a couple people out with it, and it's fine. It does have a synthetic line on it. Um, also on the front, you can see it added a light bar and some pod lights. You know, again, something maybe a lot of people don't love, but I tend to find myself doing a lot of night trails and also tend to pull my friends out of the ditch a lot. So the extra lighting is super nice for stuff like that. So here on the hood, I have a dual band ham radio antenna. It's an SSB5 by Comet. I unfortunately had to put cow covers on because I uh, have a mirror dent now. One of my straps broke during recovery, uh, door straps broke during recovery, and well, now I have little covers to cover up the dent and protect it from more. So these little pod lights, I'll show you more here in a minute, they're actually uh, amber and white, so they can act as warning strobes, which is super nice for uh, recoveries at night, pulling people out of the ditch, keeps you safe so other cars can see what's going on. Have some aftermarket hood latches. Mine actually broke on the highway on the way to Moab. Luckily the other one in the latch kept it the hood from flipping up and doing any more damage, but did have to upgrade those. Got some ruby rails. This is a sport, but I just picked up some aftermarket uh, or some takeoff ruby rails just for a little extra protection. I don't do anything too extreme off-road, so that should be enough. <laughs> Jeep's a little muddy, but as you can see, we're up pretty high in the mountains and it's a muddy road. So back here on the back, I also replaced the rear bumper. This uh, rear bumper has a tire carrier mounted on it. So I had to remove the factory license plate, relocate it because the tire carrier actually obscured it. So it's mounted up on the tire there. Um, with this large heavy off-road tire, you definitely don't want to keep all that weight on the tailgate. So this actually swings out and I mounted a couple more of the little pod lights up here on top. So those can be a strobe for the back for warning lights. And then right here, this is actually a key box. And yeah, I know those aren't super secure, but they are better than the little magnetic ones you stick somewhere. And if someone really wants in the Jeep, they're just gonna break the glass. So that's pretty nice. I also added a little backup camera down here. Uh, my Jeep didn't come with one, so that's just drilled into the bumper there. And that's pretty much it on the outside. Uh, the light bar, yeah, it is noisy, but it is super bright. And it's just a cheap one, but it's working so far, and it's really nice if you're doing a recovery at night. So let's go ahead and jump on the inside and take a look and see what we've got in there. Okay, so let's take a look here on the inside. Uh, first thing you're probably going to notice is my accessory dash bar. And if you follow the channel or follow me on TikTok, you'll probably see a little bit more of that. Uh, this is a one by one aluminum extrusion that you can mount accessories on with little T-nuts. And it's mounted into some holes in the dash, uh, into bolts inside the Jeep's dash that uh, allow you to attach it without cutting anything or permanently modifying anything. So. That's kind of a nice little addition. You can see right here, I have my Yezu FTM 300 mounted on there. That's my 
ham radio that goes with the antenna and then the or the body of the radio is actually mounted under the seat next thing on the bar here is a little iati uh, cell phone holder this one is the automatic one with wireless charging it's pretty cool but it doesn't hold very well off-road so i may be looking for a different option it's great for in town because it wirelessly charges and holds the phone real easily uh, this is a 3d printed gopro mount over here i had to 3d print a little adapter to go from the ball mount on the iati to the ram mount there and then here on the end, I have a little 3D printed end cap that's like a little Jeep grill, just for fun. Have a Smitty built visor organizer up here. Uh, this one has just a tire gauge, flashlight, uh, tourniquet, handcuff key. Uh, my wife's in law enforcement, so just in case I ever needed one. Uh, and this is a Gerber tactical pin. Let me get to focus here. There we go. And it actually has a glass breaker on the end of it, which is kind of nice. So not only do you have a pin, but maybe a way of egress. Up here, we have the S-Pod. Um, this one controls all of the lights, as well as my ARB compressor that's mounted to the seat. So that controls all the pods. Now, those pod lights I showed you earlier on the outside are controlled by this switch. And this switch actually cycles through uh, different modes. So when you first turn it on, it goes to solid amber. You flick it again, it goes to solid white, amber and white. And then it has an amber strobe, amber and white strobe, um, and it cycles through those different modes. So that's kind of nice. I've got two blank ones I haven't used yet. Those will probably be for lockers in the future. Um, this is a pretty nice little setup. Nice and easy to wire. They're kind of expensive, but it does have an app you can remote control it and do some special functions with. So that's pretty cool. Um, down here I have a Xtron's aftermarket head unit. Uh, this one's actually runs Android. I'll go into more detail on it here in a second. Next thing I'll show you guys is my ham radio mic mount right here. So this is the Yezu's microphone. And I 3D printed a little magnetic adapter. And it replaces the fake uh, screw that is in the trim here. So I can get that glare off there for you. And it actually allows the mic to snap into place. Nice and solid, doesn't fall off off-road, and just has two little neodymium magnets with 3D printed mounts. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, that is an extension that goes down to the body under the seat. And also, if you follow me on TikTok, you probably saw my Molly door panels. So these replace the little nets that tend to get saggy on the Jeep. And in here, I have a couple little pouches. First one has a <clears throat> Olight Nova H2, uh, super bright little right angle light. Uh, I keep a headband for it so I can use it as a headlamp if I need to do something at night. And this next pouch just have a Spyderco Paramilitary uh, 2, I believe. And then Leatherman Mutt. Uh, nice thing is this little half inch wrench that the Leatherman Mutt comes with actually works for most of the bolts on that, the light. So if I need to adjust anything, it's the right size. And then I have a little paracord um, strap here because the original factory one broke and that's why I have the dent in the cowling up there. So a couple more things to talk about up here. Uh, in the center console, I keep my sunglasses and a pair of safety glasses. Have an extra charging cable up here and just a marker in case i need to write something down uh, and the bottom of this this is kind of a mess right now i actually have the drone battery in here um, i keep this pretty empty because i like to throw stuff in here that i might need to lock up not the most secure lock but better than leaving them easily accessible this is a little charger that's charging the drone battery and it's also powering the iati charger up there on the dash in here i just have some random stuff uh extra magazine for my shield which is my main concealed carry um this is also you know, we've got uh, a couple things stuck to it but this is the charger and the headband for the olight so i can turn it into a headlamp don't keep a whole lot more in there uh one thing i do have in there actually dig it out here 
is I keep a extra padlock. So I have the key to this. This padlock secures a couple things around my house, like my gate and stuff. And I keep an extra one in case I need to lock up a trailer or something. So I just have that in there. That's about it for the front, except for that's a little pouch over there. Um, that's on the same kind of Molly insert. Uh, in there, I just have sunscreen and bug spray for if we're out in the woods, make sure we don't get sunburned and bug bit. Okay, so the back seat is a little bit of a mess. I uh, have my child seat back there because my kiddo still needs a booster. Uh, I had to buy a special uh, sunscreen for the Jeep because it's got such a short window that the universal ones don't really work. Uh, up here I have paracord grab handles for the rear passengers to get in easier and have something to hold on to. Uh, I keep the road atlas here uh, so that I have backup navigation in case all my electronics fail. The head unit of the Jeep does have a GPS in it and it also has or offline maps of the entire U.S. downloaded. So, you know, as long as the Jeep's running, that'll work. But, you know, in the case that don't have GPS signal or whatever. This is also a more detailed map of Colorado. Uh, this is my EDC bag. If you haven't watched that video, definitely go take a look at it. Um, this adds a lot to the system here. It has first aid, trauma, stuff like that, and it's survival stuff. So that really rounds out the system. So I always bring that with me and I consider that actually part of the, the Jeep's EDC too. So under the seat, I try not to keep anything too permanent down there because I want to be able to fold the seats down if I need to. So basically I just have jackets uh, and some cold winter gear, a blanket. Um, so there's not too much else in the back. Okay, so let's go to the back where pretty much everything's at. Looks like stuff moved around a little bit because it's kind of a bumpy road getting in here. So first of all, up top, I have a shovel, an ax, and a high lift jack. And those are mounted. The shovel and the axe are secured to the high lift jack by these two thousand pound straps. And the high lift jack is actually mounted to the roll bar with the high lift roll bar mounts there. And it's just mounted up nice and high to keep out of the way of the storage capacity in the Jeep. Over here I have a two and a half pound ABC fire extinguisher and a poison spider mount. I tried a smitty built melt. I tried a mini built mount, but it was terrible. Uh, this one's nice and sturdy. So first thing in here, this is actually just a little cooler and it has water bottles in it. And if I open it up here, you can see that they're uh, still liquid and it froze pretty hard last night here. So this tends to keep them from freezing in the winter in the Jeep. And it also tends to keep them from getting too hot in the summer. So that's why I keep them in a cooler. Next thing here is a wool blanket. Uh, keep that in for warmth in case we're broken down and stuck somewhere. Um, wool maintains its resistant or um, insulation value even when it's wet. So I like to keep that in there. <clears throat> Next thing here is my basically 72 hour kit. So this has a change of clothes. And it also has survival stuff. So we take a look here. This is a really basic uh, first aid boo-boo kit. So just bandages, wet wipes, stuff like that. These are extremely heavy mill contractor trash bags. This is my fire starting kit. I have a flint and steel and some stormproof matches in there. How about 50 feet of paracord? This is a Mora uh, Light My Fire knife. And it actually has a ferro rod built into the handle. And then there's a Kim Light and some zip ties. Just for backup emergency repair. Uh, and also, last but not least, I have a Sawyer filter with the cleaning syringe. Oh, there goes the cap. And it's squeeze bag, so I can filter water. And then with the uh, cleaning syringe, you can then back flush it and get a lot more use out of it. 
Okay, next pocket here. Now that I got that one, I'll put away. <laughs> Pretty small pocket, but well, there goes my whistle. But I do have my little SOL survival kit that I've modified a little bit. Add a lighter um, and a couple things. And then there's an additional whistle that fell out there. So that has a Mylar blanket, um, fire starting capabilities, some cordage, uh, stuff like that. And then we'll get into the big pocket here. So the main bulk of this bag is actually clothing. So in here I have, this is an extra long sleeve shirt, extra pair of underwear, some pants. Uh, in here some wool socks. I have a watch cap um, and a big winter coat in there. So that's the bulk of this bag. You can see I also have some lifeboat rations for emergencies. And then in here, this is actually a SOL um, Silni tarp system. So for extra shelter. And that's pretty much it for that. I do have some other survival stuff in my EDC bag that I keep in the Jeep. So go take a look at that video to see what else I have for in here. So I'm going to put this away and then we'll take a look at the tool bag. Okay, so this is the tool bag that I carry in the Jeep. Uh, this thing weighs about 70 pounds, so there's lots of stuff in it. Uh, first of all, these are my waterproofed uh, winter leather gloves that I showed, made a video on making. They're really great for this time of year. Uh, so keep your hands warm and dry. Maglite LED flashlight. Not the brightest thing in the world, but uh, these are the original batteries from like seven years ago so this thing earned its spot just by always having batteries this next pocket here this is a <clears throat> duck brand wrap fix tape this is a self vulcanizing type of rubber uh, tape i've actually used these to fix uh, radiator hoses and had them last the rest of a trip before so uh kind of popped open there so you can peel it off wrap it around something it shrinks and sticks to itself and creates a super waterproof bond also have a roll of double stick tape just in case you know something falls off the dash or whatever next thing in here this is just a higher or a high visibility reflective vest uh, again, I tend to find myself on the side of the road helping people out quite a bit up here in the mountains. And this just keeps you safe and make sure people can see you. Next pocket, this is a, another set of gloves. These are mechanics gloves. Um, a little dirty from the last time I used them. These are nice for if it's not super cold out, but you want to wear some gloves when you're uh, winching or what have you just for some basic protection next couple pockets here i have uh, ratchet straps so if i need to tie something down or if something breaks you need to basically ratchet strap an axle back in place those are great to have around turning the bag around here to the other side uh, this pocket just has uh, I don't know if I can get out of here. This pocket has a multimeter. This is just a cheap little digital multimeter, but it does have a continuity beeper and some stuff like that. This is great for diagnosing electrical problems. These are some accessories for the air compressor. So if I want to you know, inflate a ball or whatever, this is a tire patch kit. You just have your standard little worm plugs and what have you. Uh, work really great for tubeless tires. Um, I've actually made basically permanent repairs with those before, even though you're not supposed to. So excellent way to repair a flat easily out in the field. And then here is also a blowgun nozzle. And that's so I can, you know, clean stuff out or inflate a ball or whatever. The ARB compressor doesn't have like an extremely powerful flow. Um, but, you know, if you want to fill up a soccer ball or even an air mattress, it can do that. And that last pocket there is empty. So 
let me get rearranged and we'll take a look inside. Okay, so let's take a look inside. First thing here, this is my like little tool kit. So in the camo bag is actually a folding shovel, Baco Laplander saw, nice heavy duty shred knife. This little folding shovel in here is one of the uh, Amazon Chinese ones that you see people testing and being surprised at how durable they are. And it comes with a couple different pieces to the handle that kind of screw on there. Um, it has like uh, compass and fire steel, a couple different things in it. It's kind of just a backup tool. Uh, I do have my nice Fisker shovel up there. So this is more of a backup tool. Okay, right, so we got that guy back in there. Uh, the next thing here, this is actually a uh, lockout tools kit. So it has some airbags and wedges. Um, I used to be a tow operator and still do some roadside assistance kind of stuff. So that's a uh, basically the tools for the lockout tool. A little white guy you can see up there on top. That's a long reach tool for opening up cars. And this is the other tools to get it in there. Those are legal to carry in Colorado as long as you don't give them a reason to consider them burglary tools. Take this guy out of the way here. <clears throat> These are um, straps that protect the winch line. They just Velcro onto the winch line if you need to go over a hard point. This is a big old uh, 30 foot, 10,000 pound capacity toe strap. This is a 20 foot kinetic recovery rope. Uh, it's kind of like the Yankum ropes you see everybody use, but it's a kinetic recovery rope. Uh, tree saver, in case I need to winch off a tree. I could probably use the toe strap, but it doesn't hurt to have a shorter one just in case you need it. Roll duct tape. And then all of these bags here are sockets. So there's a 300 piece mechanics toolkit in there. So I also have ratchets, uh, wrenches. So that's everything in there. These are Torx bits, specifically for the Jeep. There's more adapters and extensions. And these are, so you can see them here. These little guys here are pass-through sockets of different sizes that work with this little crescent wrench. It has a little ratchet back here. So you can actually run through whole bolts with that. Also have some Allen wrenches, some Torx. Um, if you are, have ever been around a Wrangler, you know Torx fasteners are really important. These are small screwdrivers, pliers, more pliers, channel locks, and dig them out of here. Have some diagonal cutters and channel locks. Underneath the sockets and mechanics tools there, and this is the wrenches and ratchets. I have a snatch block and a little receiver adapter for a shackle. So if someone has a receiver but no recovery point, you can use that. Over here, I have my half inch uh, ratchet, a little hammer, some zip ties, and a five in one screwdriver. And that's pretty much all for the inside of the bag. Um, that's a 300 piece mechanics toolkit and quite a few other tools there. If you guys can think of anything else that might be useful, let me know. Uh, as far as recovery stuff, I'd really like to get some soft shackles and things like that so that I don't have to use the big metal D-ring shackles because the less metal flying around in case of winch line break, the better. One of the big things I do need in here is some weights to throw over my winch line. Um, I've just been using either a strap or a jacket or something like that, but I do need something a little bit better. Um, let me put this back together and I'll show you what is under the little uh, compartment in the back of the Jeep here. All right, so the last thing I have back here 
And if you're familiar with Jeep Wranglers, you'll know that some of the newer models have a subwoofer in this location, but mine doesn't have one. It's a base model, so no subwoofer over there and no subwoofer under the carpet. So under the little carpet panel here, we have the things I'll probably use most often or may need to get too quickly. So first of all, this is a airline for the air compressor. Tire inflator for the air compressor. Heavy duty jumper cables. Um, these guys are, let's see, I believe they are two gauge, 20 foot. So very heavy duty. I don't like the little cheap ones that like to melt. Another pair of gloves and some road flares. So that's pretty much all that fits in there, but it's kind of a handy little compartment. All right, guys. Well, that's everything I have in my 2013 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. If you guys have any comments, please let me know. Also check out the other video that has my EDC bag and my on-body EDC system because this is all one large system that works together. So I'm going to continue enjoying this beautiful day up here in the Colorado mountains. I look forward to hearing from you guys, and I'm going to try to produce more videos uh, more regularly. Um, so I'd love to hear the comments, and thank you guys for watching.